Okay guys, here's the engine in my 1991 Toyota Celica GT4 Group A. The Toyota Celica runs a 3S GTE turbocharged 2 litre 4 cylinder. In this variant with a water to air intercooler. I guess we'll start with something nice and easy which is the factory air box. So I've retained that factory air box because I wanted to try and keep a standard looking engine bay as much as possible. So I'm actually just running a K&N panel filter inside that standard air box. You'll notice that the factory intake piping has been replaced. I'm running the Ruse Motorsport silicon intake pipe kit which is nice because it's a matte black finish. Very good quality pipe work and that runs down into the turbocharger there. So the turbocharger itself is actually completely custom built. So it is externally a Toyota CT26. However, I've had that sent off to GCG turbochargers in Sydney, New South Wales. And that has been completely rebuilt with internal porting and high flowing to both the compressor and turbine wheels, uh, high flowing to the wastegate. It's now running billet internals, which has uh, been set up with a GTX 3071R compressor wheel and an in-canal exhaust wheel, all high flowed. Also running a turbo smart wastegate actuator, which is hiding down in there, which at the moment has a 17 PSI spring. So really nice turbocharger setup. I love the fact that it looks uh, factory still, and yet internally you've got billet internals and uh, GTX 3071R. Uh, compressor wheels so yeah quite a handy little setup there whilst we're in this part of the engine bay you'll also notice the turbo smart compact blow-off valve so what I've actually done there is had the exhaust shop drill a uh, 25 mil hole in my intake pipe down in there and then that way I'm able to run that as a recirculator blow-off valve keeping it a little bit quieter intercooler wise you'll see that I'm still running the factory standard Toyota water to air intercooler. The only change that's made there is that I do have the pump run constantly on ignition uh, just to keep that flow of water there. Uh, so far so good. I'm running generally around 15 degrees above ambient uh, regardless of outside temperature. So I think given that I'm running 18, 19 psi of boost, I think that that's uh, quite reasonable from that factory intercooler. Okay, you'll see that I've also added a three port catch can there's um, fairly high uh, crankcase pressures in the 3S GTE, so I wanted to give this as much breathing capability as possible. In order to run the three port, I've added an additional port to the uh, valve cover over this side, you'll see tapped in there. And that runs across to the uh, three port catch can. And then that center port there will then run back. And I've had that plumbed back into the intake just down in there. And it means that I've taken care of that recirculation side of things. And they're really nice, the Mishimoto three port catch can. They've got internal baffling, really good quality can. So yeah, very happy with that. Whilst we're up in that uh, end of the engine bay, you'll notice up the back there that we have the Haltech flex sensor. So obviously running E85 in this car. Uh, so that flex sensor is uh, detecting the amount of ethanol in the uh, fuel. Exhaust wise, you'll see that I'm running the Burke Technology three inch dump pipe down in there and a K&N oil filter. I have got that wrapped at the moment, but I'm looking at actually removing that wrap because it is ceramic coated. So it's probably a little bit of overkill. You'll also notice up this end of the engine bay that I've got the uh, coil on plug set up just to help with the ignition. So that's quite a, a nice little setup, neatens things up, gets rid of all the spark plug leads, etc. Now hiding down in there, which you can't really see at the moment, is the fuel system. I'm running the ATS Racing top feed fuel rail conversion with uh, 1200 cc injectors. And that allows me obviously to supply the amount of fuel that it's gonna need with the E85. You'll see that I've got the oil pressure sensor externally mounted there just to stop it from getting excess vibration if it was mounted to the engine. So that takes the oil pressure sensor from down just off the head. And you'll notice that we've done the same thing over here with the uh, fuel pressure sensor. 
so you can see the video on my channel for those sensors. Other than that, it's running completely uh, standard internals. The head has been removed and fully reconditioned, uh, running ARP head studs and a Kometic head gasket, uh, obviously just to help keep it uh, sealed nice and tight under boost. Um, but other than that, it is all completely standard. Stock cam, stock valve, stock head, stock block, stock pistons. Cool little thing on the Australian delivered Toyota Celica is the uh, individual plaques that they put on for the owners when they bought these new. So you can see that this was installed new in 1991 for a Jeffrey fix. Wonder if he still wonders where his car's at. You'll notice that the Australian delivered variants do have the ABS. I'm not sure if that was a factory option in the European or Japanese markets, but these vehicles do have that ABS. If you have any questions, feel free to put those in the comments. And if you want to see more videos, feel free to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.